Hello everybody and welcome to another top 5 board gaming video. Today's topic is all about games that turn the table. And what I mean by that is games that kind of go against the standard tropism of the fantasy adventure where you have a group of folks who meet in a tavern or a pub or whatever and they're like, hey, let's adventure together. They go out, they slay the dragon or whatever, get all the loot, and then they come back and the village is saved and everybody is all happy and good. In these particular games, you are on the other side of it. You're playing as the bad guys, you're playing as the folks who are just trying to make things work, all of that kind of stuff. Now obviously this is a relatively common theme because we see a lot of treachery and that type of thing, but I wanted to be at least a little bit more direct with most of the games I'm talking about where you are playing as things or people or whatever that are notoriously known as bad guys. So I think it's kind of fun, I think it's a really interesting topic, I hope that you guys enjoy it. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments below with your personal picks as well as your thoughts on my own. But without further ado, we're going to get started with my number five. At number five, I've got Last Will. This is an interesting one that turns the table on the idea of receiving an inheritance, where the whole point is that you get money if you spend all of the money as fast as humanly possible. It's something about a, um, a relative recently deceased wrote in their will that whoever spends as much money as possible as fast as possible wins and gets whatever it is. So it's kind of weird in that sense because hopefully at least normally you don't think about spending a whole bunch of money when you get it, but yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much what, what it is and how it works. So the game itself is actually fairly interesting. It's a worker placement slash hand management, resource management, all of this kind of stuff where the idea is that you're trying to throw the most extravagant parties, buy the best clothes, all of this kind of thing, simply in order to spend as much money as you can. Now that said, it's really low on the list because it's not really a trope to save money when you get an inheritance. Most people, at least in TV shows and movies and stuff like that, tend to spend it. So I don't know. I, I guess it's not super tropish, but at the same time, it's just kind of funny to have a game whose entire theme is about getting rid of a windfall as quickly as possible. So Last Will is my number five. And number four, I've got Pandemic. Not really. Specifically, I've got Pandemic on the Brink expansion, the first expansion, with the Bioterrorist. The Bioterrorist player is actively going against everybody else. Everybody else is trying to stop the spread of diseases and eventually cure and eradicate them, while the Bioterrorist is actively trying to spread disease and infect new cities and do all of this kind of thing. And so it definitely turns the tables in terms of you have one group that is very distinctly and openly working to do one goal and then you have the one person who is very distinctly and open and openly working towards a completely different and opposite goal and essentially that's why it's so low on the list is because it's not inherently turning the tables because this is more of a treachery mechanic than it is anything else but at the same time as far as strictly speaking good guys versus bad guys and having a bad guy, bioterrorist versus a bunch of people trying to cure a disease, you can't really beat it, especially in the times of COVID. So I think it works pretty well. Bioterrorist um, module in the On the Brink expansion for Pandemic, my number four. And number three, I've got Cutthroat Caverns. This is a game that is very much in the category of treachery. So this is the semi-cooperative game where the idea is that a monster is revealed and whoever gets the killing blow is the only person who gets the credit for it. And in this particular game, obviously, you're talking about an adventuring party who is not necessarily working together as well as they could or should be. And that's kind of where I was thinking with it for this 
particular list and um, very much so because it is heavily heavily focused on the very standard fantasy tropes from things like D&D and Pathfinder and all of that kind of thing but at the same time mechanically it's a wonderfully well done game it's very quick to play it's a ton of fun and you never quite know when you're gonna get backstabbed or when the best time to backstab somebody else is so that you can make sure that you get that last blow and get all of the shiny gold all to yourself. Cutthroat Caverns, my number three. And number two, I've got Nefarious, where you're playing as a mad scientist. The whole point of this game is that you are literally trying to build doomsday devices to hold the entire planet hostage, and whoever does it the best wins. So... It's awesome. I absolutely love it. And it's a really, really well done game that has a lot of interesting staging associated with it, where the idea is that you have to research information about particular devices, collect all the materials, build it up, all that kind of stuff. Not to mention you're in contact with all the people in the government and all of this sort of thing. It's a lot of fun. It's actually a really quick game to play as well. It's really simple to play, but it's just something that when you think of bad guy or you think of evildoer and that sort of thing, you think of the mad scientist cackling over their massive death ray and all that sort of thing. And Nefarious is right up that alley and it really hits that awesome fun spot of I'm playing as the bad guy and this is super fun and super awesome. Nefarious, my number two. At number one, I've got Dungeon Lords, and quite honestly, this is probably the only game that fits the theme of this list to a T, where the idea is that you are a sort of dungeon master, haha, metaphorically, in the sense of you are building a dungeon, you are populating it with monsters and traps and all sorts of different stuff like that, and you are trying to stop an adventuring party from coming in and stealing all of your stuff because you worked hard. You are trying your best to make the best lair that you possibly can, and these adventurers are just wandering along and meandering in as if nothing is nothing and trying to steal all your stuff. Not cool. So in the end, this particular game is another worker placement game where the idea is that you're able to sort of purchase or hire monsters. You can get traps. You can build out your particular lair so that you can make it more cavernous and labyrinthian and all of that sort of thing. It's just a fun game, not to mention the fact that it is one of my favorite rule books of all time. I highly recommend at the very least just looking up the rule book for this game because it is a genuine pleasure to read. I absolutely adore it. And with all that said, Dungeon Lords is my number one. Well, everybody, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite games that kind of turn the table on things. So again, we're used to being the adventurers, the good guys, the ones who are going out and saving the world and save the princess and get the treasure and get the loot and all of this kind of thing. And all of these games, at least to an extent, kind of put you back either in the back seat of a campaign adventure or entirely put you in the bad guys' shoes. So I really like that fact and I like the fact of seeing this sort of um, reimagining of what an adventuring party and all of that kind of stuff can be. That said, I will say for Cutthroat Caverns, it's not unusual for a lot of D&D parties. So, meh. But either way, as always, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. What are your favorite games that kind of turn the table on common tropes? Whether it's about fantasy world or sci-fi worlds or, you know, superhero worlds or anything along those lines where you either end up playing as the bad guys, helping the bad guys, assisting it, all of that kind of stuff. Of course, again, we've got lots of treachery-based games that are very, very well done, and those could easily fit on this list to, an, uh, to a certain extent, just as cut throat caverns in my personal opinion but i do want to know what you think so put it all down below that said as always if you haven't done so already please take a look at my various social media pages where you'll be able to interact with myself and my channel in a whole bunch of really fun ways you guys know i love to hear from you and so please do it as much and as often as you possibly want to that said we are almost beating covid 
We are on the way. We are on track. We've got vaccines. But please, everybody stay safe, stay inside as much as possible, keep your distance, wear your masks, do all of that kind of stuff because it is still out there, it is still important, and I want as few people to be affected by this as possible. And unfortunately, we are not in a great place with all of it. So that said, happy note, we are on the way and we are doing things and it is working. We are fighting back. But that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.